Yeah, Priscilla Soma is a Christian who is born again, and uh, she's a twin, and we are both girls. And uh, she's somebody who comes from a background which is uh, very humble. Yeah, I'll explain in detail as we move on. Otherwise, she's somebody who has seen the grace of God upon her life. Yeah. Yes, I was born in Kitwe, but uh, we stayed a lot in Lusaka with my mother and my father. But they kept on divorcing, getting back, divorcing. So that actually, it made us to move a lot. Just primary school, we went even up to 10 schools. And uh, it's because they would separate mother, they get back. So because of that, my mother was not educated. She was just a grade seven. Actually, she finished her grade seven through night school. So even, even if she was working, she was getting very little. So that uh, when she gets paid, we would just manage to buy the sugar, the Pamela one, <laughs> and the cooking all, the, you know? So it's where well, within a week or three, four days after her pay, then we go back to eating food, which is very healthy, not by choice. <laughs> no cooking on, no sugar. And, uh, you know, it was just very hard. And uh, in Lusaka, yes, we grew up in Lusaka, but life was not easy. And the part of the growing up was in Kawe. Yeah, and that's where we learned how to even be street vendors in Kawe. Yes. Before school in grade eight. So we started selling in town at night in grade eight. So we had every opportunity to get pregnant. <laughs> Yeah, with a very genuine excuse, but <laughs> <laughs> the grace of God kept us because that's the time we're getting saved. Yes, so even if we would come back home at midnight when she's sleeping, I think we had an opportunity to do anything and everything, but the grace of God used to see us through. Yes. Um, in our family, we were born 10. But because of the life we led, five died within a very short period of time. Within, I think, four years, five died, and that's how we remained five. So us were five, we are still around, two men and three ladies. Yeah, but this time, life has changed for everyone because it's only one who is not uh, up to grade 12, but the rest of us, at least we've gone up to where I can comfortably say God has taken us somewhere else. Otherwise, all these we used to sell with them at the bars, the club, police club actually, would sell buns, would sell the eggs. Like my brother used to sell yellow buns, by then we had yellow buns. <laughs> yeah, but he's a colonel now in the army. Yeah, and then for me and my twin sister, we used to sell eggs and fritters at the station in Kawe. And as of today, the friends we used to sell with, they are still there selling even today. Even last year, 2017, they were still selling and I would buy eggs, not because I want to eat, but because I just feel sorry for them. I don't know, but the grace of God for us, it took us out of that life. Yeah, because if I can talk of me where I am today, if somebody looks at me, I don't think they can even agree that I was... <laughs> yeah, we never knew any new clothes, I know. My mother just used to get the skates, old skates, cut them and sews them for us. Those are the clothes we had. Uniforms at school, we would borrow from friends, starting from socks. Salaula socks are very cheap, but we couldn't afford <laughs> It was a luxury. Yeah, so we come from that life. My mother they couldn't afford a chitenge at home. Not even one, not because she wanted, she never had. She couldn't afford, yes. So it was that kind of life. It was really hard life. Yeah, we didn't know any lotion. <laughs> We'd use cooking oil for lotion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, schools that we attended, of course, I started school here in Lusaka at uh, Chibelo Primary School in Kablonga. And we used to walk from American Barracks. My, ma my father was in the army. And you know, army, beer is free, eh? <laughs> Yeah, and my mother was working for the police, but we used to walk from Marakan Barracks to Chibelo. It's a bit of a distance in grade one, 
but uh, up to grade 7 we were in Eastern Province, but from grade 8, that's when they now separated like permanently. But in grade 4, at one time my mother my father, they divorced. So when they divorced, we stayed with our mother and our mother wanted to get married. Now my father got BP. So he had to demand for the children. So we went to join our father in Indola. We were suffering, we started eating once per day. That woman, she used to really beat us and she would, at one time she even gave us poison, all of us, the nine of us, we were given some poison in October, we were sweating like rats in the sun and we were vomiting and just purging there, all of us. You know, so really, if God has a destiny, really doesn't work. Yeah, but uh, we had stopped actually even school for one year. We all stayed home. Dad couldn't take us to school. Yeah, but the grace of God, they reconciled with my mother later on. And that's how we went back to school. But from grade eight, they divorced again now, finally. So that's when we started now selling in the streets. Yeah. And that is uh, for books and food at home. But for uniforms, we would borrow from just neighbors. And then to get to college, uh, for me, I worked as a security guard under Coin Zambia. Yeah, I was trying to raise money to take me to college. And I did that because that's the money I paid for college at Chinama College. Uh, that was 99, yes. That's the money I paid for my college. And uh, my twin sister herself, she was a teacher. She went to Koseko. So to raise that money for her, she was in the drama, <laughs> the Kawale arrangement. So she used to play the drum, you know? So that's how she raised her money to go to Koseko also. And uh, we completed, of course, but it wasn't easy. Yeah. And also, with time, of course, we grew up, but uh, at the University of Zambia, later on, because I joined Minister of Health, but after some time, I had challenges in life, so I had to come back to school. I resigned where I was working, and by then I was alone, but uh, we were separated with my husband. Yeah, so now getting back to school, it was another challenge, which really costed me a lot because my children, I had to take care of them, and I was a student. So by then, I started selling in the street at Kulima Tower in Osaka. That's why I was selling Salaula. And that's how I could support the children and also myself for school at the University of Zambia. And sometimes I would go to Luwingu or Mbala Senga Hill. I buy some beans. Then I come and sell at Soweto. That's how I was raising money to pay for my tuition fees at the University of Zambia. Of course, I couldn't manage even a drink at, in my room. It was a really hard life. My children had to stay for some time with no school. But I thought if I sacrifice, pay for myself, at least I'm securing their future. Yeah, so really life was not uh, that easy. Yeah, so for me to even say now today, I'm even working at the same institution, University of Zambia, it's really only the grace of God. When someone holds on to God, I think in his own time, he makes everything beautiful, yeah. Okay, at Chinama, I started uh, environmental health. Yeah, that is where I went to immediately after school, secondary school, and I worked for Minister of Health as health inspector. But then I still needed to advance. Now, by then, my mother, my mother died when I was still at Chinama. Yes, so uh, later on, to advance, it's where you have to fend for yourself. By then, my twin sister had an opportunity to start working at the University of Zambia. But then, the challenge that was there, she lost her husband, so I couldn't depend on her. And myself also, you know, I don't know if it's the twinship. We separated with my husband immediately when she lost her husband. And so we separated. We, we didn't have a, a genuine reason to separate, but we separated. But that time, life was really hard. That's when I had to go to the University of Zambia. Yeah, but uh, that's the period I was selling in Salaula in town. And also, that's the period I would sell beans at Soweto Market to come and pay for the tuition fees. So he, at the University of Zambia, I started development studies. Because by the time I wanted a degree, environmental health had not yet introduced that one. 
So now I was desperately in need of a degree. So that's how I diverted. Yes. And now I'm I'm a lecturer now in the same department, Development Studies in the School of Humanities at University of Zambia. And I've even started my PhD this year. Yeah. <laughs> To some extent, maybe. Otherwise, for us, what really transpired, with my husband, we are really servants of God. Even in our marriage, we never had any challenge. Even our separation, we didn't quarrel. We just found ourselves separated. <laughs> you know, we never quarreled. It's just that, uh, you know, uh, this world we live in is really challenging. It was just an attack. I don't know, maybe it has a connection with my mother, but also I see it connected with my twin sister because the month that my twin sister's husband got cancer, that's the month, that was July, that's the month that my husband, we separated, like spiritually, I couldn't feel like connected. Yeah. Until when my twin sister, after several years, got married. So I don't know, maybe it has to do with the friendship, or maybe it has to do with uh, the background, like for my parents. I don't know. But we've undergone deliverance, and uh, we have cut all those uh, cases, and we've prayed together. Because even him, the parents separated at one time, but they got back. Yeah, so these are the things we've, tr we've prayed together. We've undergone deliverance, and also we've been praying for our children never to experience what we experienced. Yeah. I'm losing my mother. Yeah, that one, even now, my tears came. <laughs> you know, it wasn't easy. My mother sacrificed. She wasn't educated. And every day, zero one, she would wake up to cry. And she used to cry, not less silently. She would cry because when she gets paid, just buying the Pamela soap for washing, and we used to buy chick. It's the one we used to use to bath and also washing. Then she buys Pamela sugar, and then we buy tins for maize and uh, go to the grinding mill. We couldn't afford this many mill. And all the money would finish. And then now, how do we survive? We need money for school. We need money for other things. And then she was just by herself because uh, really, that woman sacrificed too much. That uh, even my brother, when he started work, when they say come for a party with your spouse, he refused to marry. He used to go and pick my mother, <laughs> and my mother would be the only one, old woman among the youngsters. Yeah, so that's the saddest moment I think I had, losing my mother, so that it affected me to the extent of losing sleep from the time she died in 1998 up to today. I don't sleep at 01 up to 04. I fail to sleep, I've been cancelled. So I use that time now to hit the enemy who took my mother. I pray. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've resorted to. Yeah, but that's, that was my saddest moment. Not even me separating with my husband, no. Because I think he had his own lesson where he went. I also had my own lesson. I take it, it was part of our training. He's also a pastor, I'm also a pastor. Yes. Yeah, um, I got born again a very really long time ago, <laughs> 1991. Yeah. And I was, that's when I was just getting into secondary school, through Scripture Union. And uh, since that time, I think he, the humble background we had made us to desire more of God. And also my mother played a very major role. She was Catholic, but she's the one who used to push us to going to church. Yeah, because that's the time that I think it was a critical time when anyone can go the other way. So she used to even push us. You haven't seen you going for an overnight, you just got us, go to an overnight. So I think she made us appreciate God, and we have seen God making us grow, actually. Because I wouldn't say 
by then we were following anything because it's a period that we were just going enjoying God not because of any material thing because it's a time that you go to church and when you go to church where there are carpets like this you would leave your shoes outside because your shoes have wires everywhere downstairs there so they will they will pick everything and anything so you find that we just had that desire for God with my twin sister but maybe when it comes to things like maybe the music that I've gone into it happened that I used to sing a lot but because of these challenges I had stopped so when I was in Europe doing my master's degree that was in 2013 and 2014 I had prayed I had done everything then I said my, my God, God why are you not serving me so it was a time that I said I think I need to give up on this God because even there in Europe I was serving God and the people knew me by that lady who loves her God you know because they were shocked to find as an if a black person giving all her salary because January for me it's a first fruit so whatever i get in January everything i give away from 2012 that's when i started doing that so when i did that in europe it was a shock for them so they named me nicknamed me as that lady who loves her god <laughs> you know so i used to even save god even in europe and i would be on duty some, sometimes so it so happened that that Sunday I was on duty. So now that week I was really troubled. I was thinking, God, are you hearing when I pray? And that's how I said I think I've reached my end. I'm giving up. And that week I called a friend here in Zambia and Calvin. I told her that my dear, me I've stopped to this God because he's not answering me. So on Sunday when I go to church, I'm just going because I'm on duty. Otherwise, I'm not going because of uh, I have stopped. <laughs> so that Sunday when I went to church, the one who was leading in praise and worship, Jonathan is an American. He said, there's a lady here who's been three years. Now you want to give up. God says, don't give up. I said, it's okay. We are men in here. And I'm not the only one, you know? So the second time when the pastor was coming to preach, Pastor Chris, Chris Taylor, he grew up in South Africa. He's a good preacher. When he was coming to preach, he said, you know what? There's a woman here who's been through a lot of challenges. And now what you have said is you want to give up. God says he's working on something. Don't give up. That one made me shiver a lot because it was a repeat. The fact we are men in here. But the second one, it made me shiver. But I, you know, I encouraged myself and continued. Now the last one was after the service because we had Holy Communion, so I was busy organizing the, you know. So this woman was visiting Netherlands. She's from Singapore. Her name is Sarah Dewey. Yeah. She just came straight where I was. So I moved. Then she said, I'm following you. And when she said that, I said, yes. Then she said, you're the only one in yellow here. I'm not it. I don't even know how God speaks if you ask me, but I believe God has spoken to me over you. You are the only one in yellow here. I'm from Methodist Church and I'm visiting here in Netherlands. I'm not here to stay. I'm just here for two weeks. But God sent me to you. I don't know your background, but he says you want to give up because you've been through a lot of challenges and you want to give up. God says don't. And the reason the devil has been fighting you, there's a music ministry in you. So that's the thing that devil fights in your life. This is what God told me. I'm not a prophet, but this is what God said. So that statement actually, it made me shiver. I dropped everything I had and I fell down. I was crying. I said, God, so it's true you heard me. You know, so that encounter really turned me into what now I can even talk about. I said, okay, so this is the reason they has been fighting me because when I look at getting poisoned, getting the school fees, a uh, hardship and the like, and also the marital one, I said, so all these, it's because of the music. I said, okay, I'll have to do it. So that's how I decided that, okay, I'll start singing. But the singing, mostly when I'm sleeping, I dream that I'm singing. So that's how all the songs here, even the second album, that's how they've come. 
It is where I'm dreaming that I'm singing with some people. And then I even tell those people that, yeah, this song is nice. Let me wake up and record it before I forget it. That's in a dream. So that's how these songs have been coming. That's the gift that the devil has been fighting. So that's how I said I need to purpose and produce the songs that somebody else can be built up with because there's great messages, very deep message in these songs. Some of them I'm talking about my life and then some of them I'm talking about what God is doing 
for example, like the song that you are just playing, the Mpangeni, it's a song that is saying, God cannot use you if he has not made you. But that process of making you is not easy. It's painful. So if you're not strong and enduring, you will give up like the way I wanted to give up. But for you, if you are having a challenge in life, the Bible says there are tribulations in this world, but I've already overcome the world. So he has already overcome. And also he says that the tribulations, the challenges we are facing are for our good. Why? Because they will produce an endurance, which will produce faith, patience and hope at the end of the day and the character, you know. So to me, I believe when we go through challenges, God is dissecting you, breaking you into pieces so that he himself can mold you into something he can use. So this is the song number eight, which you are just listening to on the video. It says, Mpangeni, Mpange Chintucho Mungabomfia. So I believe all the challenges I went through, they were trying to remove all the short-temperedness in me, all the irritations, and God has made me into a very tolerant person. If you come and step on my toes, I'll laugh. <laughs> Instead of beating you, I'll laugh because Arimpanga, it's no longer I that lives, but him. What I desired most, because of all the challenges, now what I desired was just God, and that's the time he said, now I can use you. Yeah. The album, the title track is Yahweh Mueva Teka. Yeah, Yahweh Mueva Teka. It's a song, it's song number four on the CD. The CD is with me here. It's song number four. It talks of God is the one who reigns in every life, in every situation. Now, Philippe is still reigning and is very much aware. Yeah, so he's the one who took me from the poverty into somebody rich. So I say, Mwandengo Mukankara. So hold on to God in his own time. He makes everything beautiful. Yeah. But if you give up when you're still in the poverty, you won't enjoy the last part. <laughs> champion it up for So you're a champion. And if you have issues, it means you are the one who has it, the ball. Tabako nko muntu shkwete bola. Mubola, wako nko kwete bola. So if you have challenges, just for that part, you will yes. Amen. Actually, for me as a pastor, the pastoring issue started, we started talking about it when I, we just met with my husband. That was 1997. But to be ordained as a pastor, I got ordained in the 17. Yes, I'm sure that's when the baking was done fully. Yes, but how I combine these things, I'm an artist, yes. I'm a pastor and I'm also a lecturer at University of Zambia. So the way I marry these things, and I'm also a wife and a mother. So the way I marry these things, yes, from Monday to Friday, I work as a lecturer from 8 to 17. After 17 hours, I do my music and also family. And then, weekend, Saturday, Sunday, never visit me. I'm a busy person, I'm a pastor. <laughs> Of course, there are moments that people come even at home when it's supposed to be family time. We do attend to them. Like last night, I just had an encounter with God until 04. That's the way the time I was trying to sleep. I, was, I just had a good time. So by the time I was just saying, let me sleep, I received a phone call at 0440 from a lady who watched me on TV. Then she got my number. And then from Thomas, then she was saying, pray for me. My sister is very sick. So that's how we started praying. So sometimes the pastoral comes in, it sneaks in and out. Yeah, of course, as I'm talking, that lady she, we were praying for, she's now fine. As I was entering here to be interviewed, she called me to say, she's now fine, she has stabilized, yeah. So pastoring, we, it just combines, but the weekend, I do pastor, I don't even, even at home, they know, yes.
you know les a kumtwali la kwati ndatonto nganya limbi kumuchira that's the mistake number one that us intellectuals sometimes we can fall into but i think in a way i'm a christian before i became a lecturer so uh, being a lecturer actually is just a, a platform which i'm using also to speak to my fellow lecturers about christ what i do i speak to them and leave it to god to continue and i know they are coming i've seen them some of them have gotten born again actually the first time i led somebody to the lord who's a lecturer was my lecturer when i was in second year I led a lecturer to the Lord, <laughs> and as I'm talking, he's doing very fine. Though he's had attacks, but he's doing very fine. I hear in his church, he's even been picked as a leader at a Pentecostal church. Yeah, so we, you know, when God has sent you to speak to somebody about God, do your part and leave the rest to the Holy Spirit to convict him. Don't convict them on behalf of God. <laughs> Like the way we used to do it long time ago. You really want to hold them by the neck in you and say Jesus Lord Jesus. No, <laughs> do your part, preach the word. The word is a seed. It will remain germinate. In due season, you will find somebody is a believer. You won't even realize that you are the one who actually planted that seed for the sake of who? the glory going to God. <laughs> yes. Uh, the message I have for you who feels like you don't need god because maybe you've gotten the maximum of everything you know ecclesiastes 2 verse 26 says god has given wisdom joy peace to his own but he has given the job of gathering to those who don't love him so that at the end of the day whatever they've gathered they can surrender to those who love god so if you want to gather outside God, just know that you're gathering for the believers. And also, I want to remind you of the rich man. You know, the rich man, he was doing the right thing at the wrong time and in the wrong place. If the rich man lifted up his eyes whilst he on earth, he was going to get saved. But he on earth, he was busy with his riches and remembered to lift up his eyes in hell. When he was telling God that send Lazarus to my brothers, he should have done that when he was on earth. So now, even for you who is an intellectual and you feel what God is there and life is real, spiritual life is real, all you need is just to sit back, think about your salvation and connect with God or else you're going to gather things like chasing the wind, as Ecclesiastes puts it. And when you die, there will be no room for any salvation for you. So you just need to turn now, because after death, there will be nothing. Nothing that people will pray for me, and I'll come out of the hell where you, you will be if you don't decide to follow Christ. Time is now when you hear the word of God. Yeah, yes. Actually, for me, what happened uh, during all the process, there are moments that God would drop a word for a season and I would run with that word, you know. So what I believed in, which the scripture that saw me throughout the suffering, it was Numbers 14 verse 28, which says, declare to them that whatever I hear them say, that's what I'll do to them. So it taught me that I need to speak life, regardless of the situation. And Jeremiah 11, 20, is it 11, 29, the one that says, I know the plans I have for you. The suffering really was overshadowed by me putting it in mind that God knows the plans he has for me. And there are plans not to harm me. So just that used to encourage me that even if it looks like I'm dying, I'm not. It's for my good because it used to remind me of the BCG. You know the BCG? BCG is an injection we get when we are babies. It's a TB injection. Is this one here, sorry, I'm trying to show you something. There's a scar here on each person. This scar is for BCG, it's called BCG. They give you an injection when you're 13 weeks old or when you're just born. What they introduce in your body is a live TB bacteria. 
so that once they introduce in your body, your body will react and produce the antibodies to fight TB. So the antibodies now will be permanently immune, immunity for you against TB. So I believe this is exactly that go, what God does. He has introduced that immunity, but for that immunity to be strengthened, I need to face a challenge so that that immunity can come by. So that used to keep me going that, oh, even if this challenge has come, it's not to kill me, it's not to harm me, it's to strengthen me. So I used to know that I'm not dying after all. Yeah, so I, sh I used to have hope every time. Yeah, at some moments I could lose it, but I used to have hope, yes. As I said, Pastor Priscilla and Sama, this is Mwara. I'm a pastor, junior pastor to Pastor Peggy, who is also my twin sister. <laughs> It's a church that has been in existence for the past 31 years now. It's being uh, overseen by Bishop Mary Chikwanda. Chamba Valley Newwood. And then the other one is in Matero. The third one is the one where we are pastoring. We meet from Radson Blue from 8.30 up to 11.30. You're yeah, welcome in case you decide to come and join us. Then the fourth one is in Chalala, being pastored by uh, Reverend uh, Mwango. The first one, the first branch is being pastored by Apostle Chilambwe. The second one is being pastored by Pastor Piri in Matero. But the overseer is Bishop Neri Chikwanda. Our headquarters is in Indola. Yes.
it's very interesting actually it's interesting i feel like i'm a territory <laughs> Even attacks have advanced because you find just a text with H666 that comes to you, you know? So to me, I feel like... <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't scare me because I think the battles have really begged me. Yeah, my heart is not to crack spiritually. <laughs> yeah, but I think overall the ministry has been very awesome because I, have, I, I believe the only thing that will follow me even after my death, it's the works that I'm doing for God. Nothing else, not even my degree, not even my PhD, not even the houses I've built. That's why first fruit, I give it to willingly. And that's why we meet from rags on blue. There's nothing that we can fail to pay. Yeah, we sacrifice that money, not because we borrow from somewhere, no, yes. Yeah, of course, you know, Galatians 4, verse 1, up to 3. Actually, when you advance somewhere at verse 2, it says that until the right time has come for you to be released. You know, it says actually in the beginning that as long as the hair is a child, it's not any different from a slave. What I mean is God would tell you today that you are a pastor. He will tell you the end before it begins, but he won't even tell you the process. He never he tipped me that I was going to go through this process. Even if I knew that one day we are going to pastor with my husband, that's when we even separated. But I had it behind my, my heart that really we are going to do it, but I, don't, I didn't know how. So one thing I want to say is God will show you the end before it begins. It's just now the wisdom of God to be patient. You can't have a following if you've never followed. You need to follow. For you to qualify to have a following, you need to be the first one to follow first. Prove to, to everyone, to God, that you can follow. Then he will, give, he will trust you also with followers. So you can't say because you have anointing and then you just even insult your pastor. No. You may be gifted differently from your man of God who is mentoring you. If anything, you may even look more powerful than your man of God. That's normal because the one hitting has to get a double portion. That's why you look more anointed than him. But that's not a, need, a license to demean him. No. You need to maintain the respect. You need to maintain the, the, the you know, the submission. Uh, you need people to speak in your life. And even if you start your own ministry, you still need people to speak in your life who are over you. Because even Abraham had to give his tithe. I remember there were those when they make his deck and what, you know, it's because you need somebody higher. Yes, so that should never run out of your mind. Yeah, I'm doing my PhD in, of course, under, in masters I did agrarian and environmental studies. So I wanted to continue in, this, in a similar line. So now I'm doing a PhD with the University of Cape Town. Uh, that is uh, African Studies Department. And I'm looking at a very interesting topic. I hope I won't change. <laughs> the topic I'm looking at, you know, a traditional leader, a chief, is a chief because he has a kingdom. So now, look at the high commoditization of land that has come. There's a lot of market for customary land. So people are busy selling their land. So now in Zambia, like here in Lusaka or Mungule, you find that people are getting blinded and selling all the land and remaining without land. So now I'm trying to look at what is the future of traditional authority in Zambia. For example, Mungule, Chief Mungule has sold off all the land. There's no more land remaining in Chief Mungule. So is he going to continue being a chief? For who? So I'm trying to look at that. What's the future of the traditional authority in Zambia? 
but I want to use the same chance to also learn more music there because I know they are good musicians there. So I want to kill two birds with one stone. You know, these are just papers. Yeah. These are just papers. Actually, education is just uh, a means through which we try to interact with every category of people. So, somebody who doesn't have papers and somebody who has papers, what I'm trying to do is just to create a base where I won't be limited by anything to reach out the word of God. Even the highest, the highly educated, I'll be able to reach. So the difference with the, the, the senior to me, there's anointing there, yes. That anointing will make me submit. It's not about my papers. My papers will just open doors for me to reach out to the people that not everyone can reach out to. Yeah, so I have no problem to submit. <laughs> Even somebody is a great tool of failure, but they have the anointing. I know. <laughs> Okay, my word of encouragement, I call no kutoroka when they are still processing you. <laughs> Amen. And also, you find that in the theater, you're on the theater table, they are still operating on you. Chakari pawa, butu kapo, you will be them. So, challenges are there to make you just enjoy them. And when there's a challenge, it's a sign that it's a time for you to move to another level. Yeah, because when the Bible says, when they say cast him down, then you say lifting has come. So that challenge is just a, a time for exam. Here at Onza, when we have exams, students get sick, stressed. It's not an easy period. So even for you, the challenges you have, those are times for your exam to get to another level. Just celebrate it and hold on to God. Yes. <laughs> if you want to get in touch with me, look for me on Facebook. I have a page, a fan page. It's called Priscilla and Sama Yahweh Mwevateka. Just like that one, then you'll be able to follow. You can call me actually on 0977-580302 and also 0955, the same number. I'll repeat, 0977-580302. Or you can come to Radson Blue, that's where the church is. You'll find me there. Or come to Onza DS department. As for me, the department has acknowledged my ordination. I got ordained last year. So when you just come, I'm looking for pastor. They will know even if you don't mention the name. <laughs> yes, so, and the CD, make sure you get a copy. You'll be blessed. my wife.